in terms of wide receiver tight end. You know, we all play spread teams. Some of us play I teams. Some of us play wing T teams. So from week to week, this this template gives you a great place to start, and it gives your coaches a great place to start when you're when you're watching film. And also as a head coach, I think it gives your uh, coaches some accountability. You know, we ask our guys to have this filled out, and coach is going to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, it gives you know. These guys can do this on their own time. They don't have to do this right. sitting down with you, and it helps you know, uh, you know, give you some of that family time back, maybe. Absolutely, and and something that I failed to mention to start this, the reason why we do this is because we don't meet on the weekends. So after the game breaks on Friday night, we all have different things that we do, whether it be laundry, cleaning, you know, making sure the locker room's clean, uh, uploading film. But we don't meet on Saturday or Sunday as a staff. It's not a mandatory thing now. If I feel like I need to go see Coach Holcomb face-to-face, then we do that. But everything that we do um, on a Saturday and Sunday is over the phone or we fill out on our templates. And that's how we communicate. Um, you, know, I, you know, I know Coach has done this a lot longer than I have, but I've, you know, been in meetings where you sit down and you watch the same play 400 times over so that the wide receiver coach can watch this coverage that he thinks they're running. Um, but really that guy is just a really bad player and he's out of, you know, um, he's, you know, out of position. So, you know, we don't meet at all. So this is how we watch film, and this is how we communicate all the stuff that we did. Um, this past year was our first year of seniors um, at our brand-new high school, and we went 10-2 and two and won the conference. So, you know, there is a little bit of validity to what we're doing. Again, we don't do everything perfect. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but, you know, we feel very strongly, like Coach said, about, you know, doing this on your own um, and not spending every minute of your weekend in a room meeting for eight, nine, ten hours a day. Um, you know, it's just not productive a lot of times. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, really the big reason why that we do some of this stuff. Um, so, again, there's the defensive stuff. And then down here as an offensive staff, they're going to do something very similar. Um, and, again, like he said, as the offensive coordinator, I'm going to look at everything on here. But as a receivers coach, I really need him just to hone in on the coverage, you know, aspect of it. What's the shell of the defense? Um, what is their base coverage of two by two? Three by one, um, two by one, whether it's a two back or an 11 personnel, H back look. Um, do they have an empty check? What is their empty check? So those are some very specific stuff that we're going to ask our guys to fill out. Um, you know, the big part about playing offensive football, in my opinion, is finding the worst player on the field for the defense. Who are they trying to hide? Where's Waldo at? So we're going to look at, all right, what's their worst safety? Who is he? Is he the free? Is he a roll down guy? Um, can we attack him, um, you know, with some play action? Is he very aggressive? Um, who's their worst corner? Is their worst corner 5'9", 150 pounds? Do they have a worse corner? So those are some things that we're going to fill out. Um, worst linebacker and worst, you know, D-line play. Um, because as an offense, you know, we're going to be a run-first offense, a lot of gap scheme stuff, and we're going to do some play action stuff off of that. But if we find a defensive lineman, that is, that is small and undersized, and we know they're trying to hide him, we are going to run at him as much as possible. Whether that be counter, whether that be power, whether that be outside zone, whatever it might be, we are going to find him. And if that means we have to check the play at the line of scrimmage, then we're going to do that. If their worst cover guy is, is, is a roll down safety, a force defender, we're going to try to get the ball to the flats as much as possible. Um, so that goes into the game planning part. Um, and again, guys. Right, and I think, and I think too, for your kids, for your kids to be able to say, hey, we're going to try to find number 17, you know, this week. Your, your quarterback knows now, all right, if this kid's a corner, then this is, this is what we're going to do. Hey, Absolutely. we want to find this lineman. So it, it, it helps get an idea in your kids' minds right off the bat about who they're looking for and what Absolutely. they're trying to do and who they're trying to attack. Absolutely. And so, again, all of this is online, guys, at our website. You can, you can look at this. I'm going to upload a video this week kind of rehashing all this out. We're also going to upload this video to our website. So if you miss something, you're sitting there trying to write down a lot of stuff, don't worry about it. We're going to upload this recording on there so you guys can see all this. And then, and then the last part that we're going to look at, definitely not the least, but is our special teams. So we're going to look at each individual part of the opponent's special teams. And this is Coach Holcomb's baby. This is the head coach um, and the special teams coordinator's responsibility. So um, – what is their kickoff formation? Do they cross people? So this is looking at our return, what we would look at. Um, what are their numbers? So, again, are they putting their offensive line on the kickoff team? Are they putting a bunch of skill guys? Um, are, you know, do they onside a lot? Do we need to be looking for that? Um, do they pooch, you know, a lot? 
or do they kick off deep? You know, a lot of teams that we face don't have a lot of guys that can get it to the end zone. So, you know, sometimes they get very creative on where they put the ball if they try to position it. So we need to know that. Um, or is it a team that does have a kicker that gets it to the end zone? All right, does the kickoff team actually run down the field? Because you guys know that if there's a guy that can move it in the end zone, a lot of times those guys take those um, kickoffs off. And then kickoff return, um, you know, this is a big way of how we scheme our kickoff week to week. Um, what is their formation on the return? Are there any glaring holes? All right, can we pooch it somewhere? Can we place the ball somewhere? Um, and then a big thing for us to be aggressive in the onside kick game is do they have offensive linemen up front or defensive linemen up front? Um, because if they do, if there's number 75, 54, 67 across the front line, we're probably going to try to kick it at one of those guys. In terms of wide receiver tight end, you know, we all play spread teams. Some of us play I teams. Some of us play wing T teams. So from week to week, this, this template gives you a great place to start, and it gives your coaches a great place to start when you're, when you're watching film. And also, as a head coach, I think it gives your uh, coaches some accountability. You know, we ask our guys to have this filled out, and coach is going to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, it gives, you know, these guys can do this on their own time. They don't have to do this right. sitting down with you. And it helps, you know, uh, you know, give you some of that family time back, maybe. Absolutely. And, and something that I failed to mention to start this, the reason why we do this is because we don't meet on the weekends. So after the game breaks on Friday night, we all have different things that we do, whether it be laundry, cleaning, the, you know, making sure the locker room's clean, uh, uploading film. But we don't meet on Saturday or Sunday as a staff. It's not a mandatory thing. Now, if I feel like I need to go see Coach Holcomb face-to-face, then we do that. But everything that we do um, on a Saturday and Sunday – is over the phone, or we fill out on our templates. And that's how we communicate. Um, you know, I, you know I, I know Coach has done this a lot longer than I have, but I've, you know, been in meetings where you sit down and you watch the same play 400 times over so that the wide receiver coach can watch this coverage that he thinks they're running. Um, but really, that guy is just a really bad player, and he's out of, you know, um, he's, you know, out of position. So, you know, we don't meet at all. So this is how we watch film, and this is how we communicate all the stuff that we did. Um, this past year was our first year of seniors um, at our brand new high school, and we went 10 and 2 and won the conference. So, you know, there is a little bit of validity to what we're doing. Again, we don't do everything perfect. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but, you know, we feel very strongly, like Coach said, about, you know, doing this on your own um, and not spending every minute of your weekend in a room, meaning for eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Um, you know, it's just not productive a lot of times. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, really the big reason why that we do some of this stuff. Um, so, again, there's the defensive stuff. And then down here as an offensive staff, they're going to do something very similar. Um, and, again, like he said, as the offensive coordinator, I'm going to look at everything on here. But as a receivers coach, I really need him just to hone in on the coverage, you know, aspect of it. What's the shell of the defense? Um, what is their base coverage of two-by-two, three-by-one, um, two-by-one, whether it's a two-back or an 11 personnel, H-back look. Um, do they have an empty check? What is their empty check? So those are some very specific stuff that we're going to ask our guys to fill out. Um, you know, the big part about playing offensive football, in my opinion, is finding the worst player on the field for the defense. Who are they trying to hide? Where's Waldo at? So we're going to look at, all right, what's their worst safety? Who is he? Is he the free? Is he a roll down guy? Um, can we attack him, um, you know, with some play action? Is he very aggressive? Um, who's their worst corner? Is their worst corner 5'9", 150 pounds? Do they have a worst corner? So those are some things that we're going to fill out. Um, worst linebacker and worst, you know, D-line play. Um, because as an offense, you know, we're going to be a run-first offense, a lot of gap scheme stuff, and we're going to do some play action stuff off of that. But if we find a defensive lineman that is, that is small and undersized and we know they're trying to hide him, we are going to run at him as much as possible, whether that be counter, whether that be power, whether that be outside zone, whatever it might be we are going to find him. And if that means we have to check the play at the line of scrimmage, then we're going to do that. If their worst cover guy is, is, is a roll down safety, a force defender, we're going to try to get the ball to the flats as much as possible. Um, so that goes into the game planning part. Um, and again, guys. Right, and I think, and I think Coach, too, for your kids, for your kids to be able to say, hey, we're going to try to find number 17, you know, this week. Your, your quarterback knows now, all right, if this gets a corner, then this is, this is what we're going to do. Hey, we want to find this lineman. So it, it, it helps get an idea in your kids' minds right off the bat about who they're looking for and what Absolutely. they're trying to do and who they're trying to attack. Absolutely. And so, again, 
all of this is online, guys, at our website. You can, you can look at this. I'm going to upload a video this week kind of rehashing all this out. We're also going to upload this video to our website. So if you miss something, and you're sitting there trying to write down a lot of stuff, don't worry about it. We're going to upload this recording on there so you guys can see all this. And then, and then the last part that we're going to look at, definitely not the least, but is our special teams. So we're going to look at each individual part of the opponent's special teams. And this is Coach Holcomb's baby. This is the head coach um, and the special teams coordinator's responsibility. So um, what is their kickoff formation? Do they cross people? So this is looking at our return, what we would look at. Um, what are their numbers? So, again, are they putting their offensive line on the kickoff team? Are they putting a bunch of skill guys? Um, are, you know, do they own side a lot? Do we need to be looking for that? Um, do they pooch, you know, a lot? Or do they kick off deep? You know, a lot of teams that we face don't have a lot of guys that can get it to the end zone. So, you know, sometimes they get very creative on where they put the ball if they try to position it. So we need to know that. Um, or is it a team that does have a kicker that gets it to the end zone? All right, does the kickoff team actually run down the field? Because you guys know that if there's a guy that can boom it in the end zone, a lot of times those guys take those um, kickoffs off. And then kickoff return, um, you know, this is a big way of how we scheme our kickoff week to week. Um, what is their formation on the return? Are there any glaring holes? All right, can we pooch it somewhere? Can we place the ball somewhere? Um, and then a big thing for us to be aggressive in the onside kick game is do they have offensive linemen up front or defensive linemen up front? Um, because if they do, if there's number 75, 54, 67 across the front line, we're probably going to try to kick it at one of those guys. And, and so this is a great way for us to evaluate that. And again, goes through their punt. So you're going to break down their punt, again, with numbers. Um, who's their long snapper? Is their long snapper a, a small guy that can run? Is it a big guy that can't cover? Um, is there hang time? Are they a, um, a rugby style? So, again, this is a lot of breakdown. And I would, you know, again, challenge some of your young coaches on your staff that don't have a lot of experience um, to break down games and use this um, because I feel like it's a great tool to help them actually look at the game from a different, you know, um, view than just on a Saturday watching college football on CBS because we all can do that, but can you watch it and actually break down stuff? And then there's their punt return, uh, their field goal, okay? Who's their holder? All right, that's a big component about it. Um, is it their quarterback? If it's their quarterback, then they might try to do some funky stuff. If it's their punter and a lesser athlete, might not see a whole lot of fakes that week. Um, do they protect? Um, you know, what's their – you know, what do their edge players do? What are their wings? Are they unbalanced? Um, are their tight end and wings eligible numbers? Again, those are some small things that you might overlook. And shoot, I would overlook if I wouldn't fill this out, um, to be honest with you, because you don't think about those things. And then if you get in a, you know, a, a, a crunch and a team's got to go for two and they line up and they leak a guy out because you didn't know what number that guy was, um, then shame on you for not paying attention. But again, a lot of us don't do that. And, and you know, guys, I didn't do that either. Um, but this is, again, a great tool. And, you know, I don't watch film the same after filling this out. Um, and then their field goal block. And I think that's everything. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's everything in our template. So, again, guys, this is how we start our week. Um, or, or, excuse me, our week breakdown is on Saturday, Sunday. And, and everything that we talk about right now, we kind of have set in stone 5, 6 o'clock on a Sunday to be done. Um, again, that's not a hard set thing, but we like for all this to be done so that that evening, you know, I can look on here and I can, you know, see what the receiver coach says, the running back coach says, Coach Holcomb can look at, um, you know, what the other line coach says. We can look at what the special teams coordinator says. Excuse me. Our defensive coordinator, he can look at what the linebackers coach says, and we can get a feel for who we're playing that week um, coming up. And I think it also gives you a little bit of credibility with your assistant coaches, but, you know, the big thing is, uh, with us not meeting anymore, and, and guys, you know, uh, we, we don't say that to, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of guys do things different ways. And, uh, you know, with all the technology we have today, uh, you know, I don't think we need to sit down and, and continuously talk face-to-face -face all the time as much. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you wanted to have a, a 6 o'clock meeting on a Monday morning, I don't think your family would be upset about you having a 6 o'clock meeting on a Monday morning <laughs> to finalize things as opposed to, you know, meeting from – you know, four to eight on a on a Sunday or meeting on a Sunday morning. So uh, absolutely, just just a little just a little different way to look at it, I guess. Yes.
and I've been doing this 27 years and we just figured this out about the last three. So <laughs> I, I've spent a lot of time uh, in those meetings. I can promise you that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then from there, guys, on our template, just to kind of wrap up our template part, um, we've got an O game plan and a D game plan worksheet. So basically what I will do is after I kind of um, gather the information from the film and after, you know, watching huddle, filling out, you know, a couple columns in huddle, um, I will go in here and I'll kind of give a rough sketch of what our game plan is going to look like. So based on what they do, what are my best formations or what are their best formations? What are their best runs? What are their best passes? Um, you know, are they unbalanced? Are there any tricks? Um, what's their best, what's their base defense? What's their base coverage? What are their base blitzes? So I'm just going to kind of transfer what I broke down on this page to the other page. And guys, you don't, you know, you can be as specific as you want to be. If you're playing a team, for example, we play a single wing team every, or not, not a single wing, like a double wing team every year. Um, so it's tough for us to watch film of them and get a good feel of what they want to do on offense, or excuse me, on defense. Because when we see them play somebody else, I can't gather, you know, you know, a, a you know, an opponent's defense because they're trying to face 32 personnel, double handoff, all that good stuff. So I can't be as specific that week. However, if we face a team that's similar to us, I can be a lot more specific. Um, so those are just, you know, other ways that you can kind of break down, um, you know, defensively, what are the fronts we want to use, coverages, movements, blitzes, and then what's our goal line package going to be. Um, so those are, you know, this is kind of the, the, the staple, kind of the, the, the starting point for us on a weekend. Um, and again, guys, you can be as specific as you want, um, but I feel like this is a great tool for you to, you know, reduce all that meeting time as well as get a young coach involved. Um, and again, this is on our website. You can check it out on there. Um, and you can also watch this video again um, to kind of see, you know, uh, you know, what we're talking about. And what so, we do, what we do is we make copies of this and we break everything down probably like yes. a lot of you guys do yes. in Google Drive. And we have a, a weekly opponent. And so we'll take this and we'll, we'll, I'll put copies in it early in the year so that it'll already be in there. So if we need to, you know, if somebody, uh, if we're having an open week, it'll already be in there for somebody to break down film. We can go ahead and look at it and start looking at it earlier. Absolutely. You know, because this year we played a team in the uh, – was our first conference game. We ended up playing in the first round of our playoffs. So we'd already seen them once. Yeah. So it was really good for us to kind of go back and refer back to that. And obviously teams changed throughout a year. But it was just kind of good, you know, for us to reflect on what they did then. You know, how did they change? What do they want to do? So, it's, you know, it's a great time to reflect. Um so, you know, just going to kind of transition to, uh, to our game planning templates. Um, this is something that, that I kind of created at the beginning of last year um, because, honestly, I got tired of kind of having a different looking call sheet each week. I, you know, I wanted to, to game plan and then have everything ready for the week. So what was happening was, is, you know, we'd practice on Monday, then I'd have to go home, I'd watch film, and then I would script again for Tuesday. And then, you know, you practice on Tuesday, then you watch film and you script again for Wednesday. I wanted it all to be done at one time. And it also helped me reduce what I wanted, you know, doing a game. Because, you know, I don't know how many offensive coaches are here, but, you know, we get caught up in watching games on Saturday and Sunday and going, well, that looked really cool. I want to do that. Or I want to run this, this, and this this week. And, it, you know, you know it's just kind of, you know, unneeded. So it really helps me hone in on what I want to do. So, again, this is on there. Um, and, and, guys, this is just kind of an example. And, again, stop me at any time. Um, this is an example. So what I will do is you have an all-play sheet, all right, and this is the first sheet that you look at. So basically what it's done is it's broken down every part that you might call throughout a game. Um, it's got calls by down and distance. It's got calls by field position, so um, your openers uh, coming out your red zone, your gold zone, um, two point, two minute, any specials. And then what are your top runs and top passes? And that's going to be your skelly and your inside um, for the week. So what I do is I sit down and I go, okay, you know, these are the, these are the top plays that I want to get to. And what I try to do with my openers, you know, guys, everybody's different. You know, it depends on what your offense is, you know, what you're trying to do. I try to get into as many different formations that I want to get into to start the game just to see what we get defensively from those guys. So what I will do is I will put all my openers in, and I've got 12 openers on here. I've got hash, 
Um, and, and guys, we try to rotate through hashes so we get a feel for it in practice for the games. Um, formation, play, what, you know, what is the front and the blitz, you know, if we're expecting that from them, what's the coverage, and then any notes that we might, you know, really expect from those guys. So, again, these are hypothetical things that I've come up with. And then when you fill all this out, it's going to auto-populate your call sheet and your scripts at one time, and it's done. So, for example, this is what your call sheet would look like. So I've got my openers, and I would print this out and use this on a Thursday through and walk through sometimes and on Friday. Um, and it's got all my openers here. And then I've got a little result column right here. So, for example, say on the first play, I run outside zone, okay? And they give me something totally different. I can jot something down on my call sheet as the game's going on. So I know that whenever I refer back to that, um, I can, you know, you know, see what they're doing and make an adjustment from there. And then it's got everything else broken down. And then here's your call sheets. Or excuse me, here's your daily scripts. Okay, so Monday, we're going to focus on the first six plays of our openers, our red zone plays, our gold zone. And then in team, we're going to focus on second, on second down plays. So I've got to kind of set up as, you know, you're going to call it as you're going to go throughout a game. So second and short. Then you're going to get a second medium call, then a second long, and then you're going to recycle back through, okay? Tuesday, same situation, the second six part of your opener. So you're getting your openers in your first two days, okay? Routes on air, inside skelly, and then your third down plays, your, your third down calls, excuse me, are doing your team setting. Wednesday, you're going to jump into two minutes since you've done all of your openers. Again, you're going to revisit red zone and gold zone because those are some things you really need to focus on, in my opinion, throughout the week. And then you're going to have a play it out situation during team, okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to have your top four second medium calls, okay? So say the first one, and I'll put it in so you guys can see, um, is outside zone. And then say the result of that play is you got – uh, two yards, then you're going to have third and short, and you're going to go from that third and short menu. Or say you got no yardage, and you're going to be back at a third and medium, or you lost yardage, you're going to be third and long. So, again, it's going to let you play it out as you're going to call it on a game day. And then, of course, you have a walkthrough script right here. Okay? And, again, I'll show you how this auto-populates, and this is, this is probably the best part of it. I think I've got – getting. Y'all guys chatting? Okay, good deal. Yeah, I'm got, I got it. I okay. got it. Don't worry. <laughs> good deal. That's fine. I just saw it blinking. I was making sure. <laughs> making sure you answered. All right. So, I'll just show you. And again, guys, you fill this out as you want to call this in a game. So, I'm just going to copy and paste to make it easier. So, as you saw in your call sheet, no second downs are filled in or third downs. The only things filled out is your openers. So, I'm just going to copy and paste these things over. You guys are chopping off my screen. Let's see. All right, copy and paste this over, okay? And I'm going to do the same for third downs, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our top six plays right here, hypothetically saying this is where we want to come out from, okay? As well as our red zone, okay? And our gold zone. And again, I'm not going to fill all this out. Just so you guys can kind of see the gist of what I'm getting at. So you're going to sit down and fill this out on a Saturday or a Sunday. And then you're going to jump to your call sheet, and it's going to be filled out for you. So that you don't have to do this throughout the week and then turn around on a Friday morning while you're giving a test or you're doing whatever at school and making a call sheet. It's already done for you. And it's got your, it's got your second and third downs broken up by down and distance as well as your situations, your red zone, your gold zone. And, again, guys, I didn't fill out the entire thing, but just so you can see it, okay? And you'll, and you'll also, Coach, you'll start to see some of that carryover. Obviously, your, 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 your goal line plays or your coming out plays might, might overlap. Yeah. You know, if you're like Absolutely. us, we, we, don't, we don't want to take 50 plays into a game. You know, we want to take a – we've got a couple of base plays we run, and then we've got some, some specialty – situation plays you know we want to go over and work on our like coach said our third downs quite a bit but you know that you get a little bit of carryover in this situation too where you can use those plays in multiple situations on the field and you're just getting extra reps you're in the black zone one day the gold zone one day the red zone one day 
Well, you may have five of the same plays in those situations and yeah. you're just getting more reps at them and you're not guessing. And your kids know, hey, it's, it's, it's first and goal from the five. They know exactly what they're going to do. And, uh, you know, most of that's confidence for those guys anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like he said, a lot of times I'm just copying and pasting this stuff over because, to be honest with you, you know, my second – well, my third and short call might be very similar to what I'm calling on the goal line or I'm calling, in a, you know, another short yarded situation. So I'm going to copy and paste a lot of that. Um, and so now we'll look at your daily script. So on Sunday or Saturday, you're filling this out. You hit done, whatever. All your scripts are done for the week. So your inside is done. Okay. So you put on there your top runs, your top passes versus your fronts. Okay. And that's on there. Okay. And I just copied and pasted it over. Obviously, you're going to have coverages there. You're not going to have, um, you know, fronts specifically. But all that's there for, your, for your, your skelly throughout the week. Your openers are already on there, like we talked about. Your red zone, your gold zone. And then your team is already split up. Okay, so you have your, your, your short call, your medium call, then your long call. Then you'll flip back over, short, medium, long, and go from there. Um, and, again, I found that really helps me because we're moving the ball based on hash, and we're also moving the ball – based on the result of the play. Um, and, and, you know, guys, because I've, you know, tried to coordinate before, you know, a couple years ago, my first time doing it. And, and, you know, I wanted the perfect play and I wanted to make sure the ball was on the left hash and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I could control everything. But on a Friday night, you can't. And so there's going to be situations where, you know, you can't control it, you know, as much as you'd like. And so this kind of helps you get in the groove of that. And again, here's your, here's your Tuesday. Again, this will be specialized to what you put in. And again, that's, that's going to be your second six group of openers. So you're getting all 12. And then here is your Wednesday, and there's your play it out. So on here, I've got 16 plays. You don't have to run 16 plays. This is just all the different scenarios, um, you know, that you can go through. And again, you can call something twice if you want to go back to it. Um, but this, you know, has really helped me. You know, last year we really got going with this. Coach Holcomb, would, you know, would get me out of situation, and I would go from there. Or we would look at just the pure result of the play. We'd have somebody spot the ball, and we'd go from there. Um, and that really helped me on a Friday night call it. Um, and then your walkthrough script is already filled out. Now, again, I like taking my call sheet out um, on a Friday – or, excuse me, on a Thursday and using that so that I can look at it like I'm going to look at it on a Friday night. But if you want to have a different script broken down differently, we've got that available for you as well. So you can practice your two-point, your specials and wrinkles, whatever it might be throughout the week. Um, so do you guys have anything right now for that? Um, and, again, I do all this um, Saturday, Sunday-ish as I'm watching film, as I'm talking to, um, you know, Coach Holcomb, our offensive line coach, as I'm talking to our receiver coach, as I'm talking to our running backs coach. You know, you know we'll all be in a group message. They'll send me a couple of their ideas, what they think. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we'll talk over the phone if we need to. Um, but, you know, with us – we're going to take, you know, we have four base runs that we're going to run. We're, you know, probably not going to take all four of those into a game. Um, we've got five, five dropbacks, maybe three or four quick games that we're going to hang our hat on, and that's going to be it. Um, we're going to try to get into a lot of formations and motions. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of the gist of what we do offensively when it comes to game planning. Um, and, you know, you know, I'm an offensive guy, but I think the defensive call sheet or defensive template is the best part. Um, because it's all tendency based. Um, so kind of, you know, to give a little background about this, what we're doing with this is our defensive coordinator likes to look at things based on, um, based on tendencies, based on down and distance, as well as where's the ball in the field, whether it be uh, left hash, middle or right hash. Um, and so a couple of reports that we run through huddle, all right, that are very specific when we're putting in data is we look at the, the play direction, the play, and then the formation that they're in out of that, okay? We also run a report that is play direction, play, and hash. All right, guys, you would not be surprised, and I'm sure some of you already know this, and guys, my eyes were open this year, you know, after we started doing this, is the amount of guys that are right-handed or left-handed whenever they're calling a game, all right? I was very right-handed because our left guard and our left tackle – we're better pullers. So we ran a lot of GT counter right. And it was like 80% to 20. It, it was a crazy number. Um, a lot of teams, when they get on hashes, want to either get back to the middle of the field or they want to go to the boundary. All right, so this is what this call sheet and this template does for you. 
So we run these tendencies and we put these in. So you're going to just put these numbers in. All right. What's the first play they do out of every drive? All right. They're going to be 65, 35. What to expect? Power to the right. Okay. Again, these are hypothetical things. Your second down tendencies, your third down tendencies, and your fourth down tendencies. Okay. And then we've, and then we've even got in here broken down after a big play. What are they going to do? All right. Huddle's got a report. Um, it's called what, or it's called um, after, it's like, it's like after, after, after an explosion, after explosive, an explosive play. play, exactly. Yeah. And it's going to show you after a run of 10 or more yards, what do you, you know, you know, what does the defense do? Or what do you do on the offensive side? Or after a big pass, you know, what are they going to do? Okay. And then you're going to look down, all right, and you're going to break down based on those reports I talked about, their top formations, all right, what is their run pass? And which way do they like to go? All right. They like to run back to the boundary. Um, what is that run? What are we going to call to it? And if we have a pressure call, what's that going to be? Okay. So second top formation, third, fourth, and fifth, so on and so forth. Obviously, you know, you're going to play some teams, guys. They're doing 10 personnel, two by two and three by one, and that's it. Or you're going to play some teams that are in a, a wing T formation. And they're going to be in a lot of different formations. Um, but this is really going to help you find tendencies. And again, this is set up exactly like the offensive one in terms of it auto populates for the rest of the week. So here's a look at what the call sheet looks like. All right. What I've done is, is it's marking out the lower percentage. All right. So for example, the you need run, to share that coach. I don't, I don't know if we've got it. I don't know if we've got it. Can you guys see that? You're still on the the offensive one that I've got that I see. Oh, yeah. Hang on, new share. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. Sorry. This might help. You guys there see you this go. Now? That good? makes more sense Dang now. It. <laughs> I've been talking about this and not even able to see it. All right. So defensive one. All right. Over here we've got it broken down. Tendencies broken down. All right by down or distance. First, second, third, and fourth. What are their run to pass based on distance and what play to expect? All right, I'll just talk through this again, not a big deal. All right, and then what we've got is we've got tendencies based on hashes, left, middle, or right. All right, high school hashes are you know, huge. So obviously teams are gonna be either more right-handed, more left-handed based on pullers, based on quarterback, you know, handedness. Is he right-handed, left-handed? Um, based on their best players. If you're playing a wing T team, all right, is their best running back the left guy or the right guy? What plays do they run with those, okay? So what you're going to do is after you run those huddle reports um, that I mentioned, all right, is you're going to fill this out, okay? Top formations, run pass, direction, what you expect, what your calls are, base call, pressure call, okay? Middle of the field, all right, and then right, hash, and then here's some red zone and goal line tendencies that you're also going to look at. And you're going to say, all right, you know, Coach, this is just like the offensive one. It is, but the defensive one's better, in my opinion, because it's all tendency-based. It's not going to lie to you, okay? You're not, you're not chasing ghosts. You're not at all. Yep. And then on Monday, you're able to put your scripts in, all right, based on the tendencies that you're looking at. And then your top runs and top passes, and that's, again, your inside and skelly scripts or what those are, Okay. So then I'm going to take you to the call sheet. You guys didn't get to see it before. All right. So the call sheet looks very similar to what you did, but it's got a couple nuances with it. What it's going to do is it's going to bold and it's going to continue to highlight the higher percentage of the tendency of a team. Okay. So for example, there's no need for me to show you that after a big play, they only throw it 28% of the time. You want to see that larger number. All right. That's going to help you out when you're looking down at that call sheet on a Friday night, all right? You want to know that on second and second and medium, they're really 50-50. You can't really jump on one thing or another. But you know that second and short, they're probably going to take a shot, okay? So these are all these tendencies that are built in, all right? And this is going to look like the offensive one in terms of it's going to fill out automatically for you. Your call sheets. All right. On Monday, all right, just kind of like how, how, how the offensive one's set up, you're going to focus on long down and distance, 
during your team on Monday. And that's how we've got it set up. Again, you're going to go through an opener. What's their, you know, top opener? What's their top second and long call? What's their top third and long? And then I want to give a pressure call. So, for example, it's a long down and distance. I want to send a blitz here. What's that going to be? So what this really does, guys, is when you look at this, you've got a chance to rep three different, all right, or two different openers, all right, one after a big play, and you get to look at three different second and long calls that you're going to see on a Friday night, all right? And, again, you can run more than 12 plays if you like. That's just what we've got down here, okay? Tuesday is medium calls, all right? What you're going to get, second, medium, third, medium, pressure. After big play, second and third, medium. Wednesday, again, same stuff that you're working, but on Wednesday, all right, you're going to look at your short calls, all right? What's an opener, all right? What's a second and short, a third and short, then what's a pressure call, okay? So when you get done with this, you're going to look at and you're going to have a, you know, a situation where you're looking at six openers of a defense – or excuse me, of an offense of what they're going to do. You're going to be able to look at three times at least a second and short call specifically from another team. And then a walkthrough script at the end. But I'll show you how this stuff auto-populates in. It's just like the offensive one, guys. So I will just copy and paste this over. All right, to the middle of the field. And, again, you guys are going to have some teams that are in one formation the entire game. All right? You won't need this as specific this week. Some weeks you might see a team that's going to give you, you know, seven formations, all right? And you're going to have to look at that. And then I will make – I will copy and paste over our Monday scripts to our Tuesday so you guys can just see this filled out. All right. And there we go. Okay. So then when you go to your call sheet – there it is, and you're ready to roll on a Friday night. It's like what our defensive coordinator, for example, likes to do. He's got a guy spotting, okay? He can look on the field and see left hash, right hash, or middle of the field. But what he's looking for is, all right, down and distance. So he can look down and he can go, all right, Coach Creason, it's second and short. All right, second and short, they're 50-50. We're in the middle of the field. Bam, this is their top formation. This is what I'm going to. Or um, it is uh, third and short. We're on the left hash, all right? We know they're getting a run. What's their top run? All right, it's inside zone. Let's go to it, okay? So it really allows you during the game to look at tendencies that you've seen based on one game breakdown, two game breakdown, three game breakdown, however many games you get to break down, it allows you to see that, okay? And then here's your, your daily scripts. And again, guys, all this is done on the weekend. And it, it, guys, it might look like a lot, but it's really not. After you watch this film and you print out these reports, you just sit down, you fill this out and it's done. Your entire week is done. Your call sheet, your Monday through Thursday scripts are done. You don't have to you know, look at them again, unless obviously you get to Wednesday and, and something's wrong or something's bad on, you know, on the field, you can go back in here and adjust it. So there is your script for your team. And again, your inside and Skelly, you're gonna go through your red zone period, goal line period if you have them. And then what we've got on all this, I failed to mention on the offensive one, all right, this is the only part that you need to edit, all right, on these entire scripts is just go in here and put your JV team. Now, if you're like us, all right, our, our, our varsity staff coaches our JV staff. We don't have split staffs. But we run the base 12, 15 plays every week with our JVs on offense. Defensively, they're going to be in two fronts, have two blitzes, two coverages, and that's probably it. All right, with our JV group. If you have a freshman team, you know, you might do that similar to it. But that's how we, you know, do our JVs. You know, those guys were really successful last year. But it helps them go ahead and get in the system and not really overload those guys. And you can you can add wrinkles every week if you yes. want to add one thing with your, you know, with our JV kids. You know, uh, two years ago or a year ago, we added a, a goal line, you know, a power eye package. You can do any of that stuff if you want to. But it allows those kids to, to do the same plays and the same things that we're doing. And since we don't exchange film, we don't have to worry about the other team scouting our JV very much. Yeah. We don't change, yeah. exchange film with our JV. So yeah. it's just getting those guys really, really good at, at what they want to do. Absolutely. So, guys, there's our, there's our, our game plan templates, all right? Um, 
And then, you know, on Friday night, you know, it's, it's go out there with your call sheet and go. But that's – guys, that's honestly how we do our – how we do our practices, every single practice. Um, we've got our, our – we, we've got these two templates in there. We've got our video, um, our video scout checklist, and we've got our daily scripts all in a Google um, Drive that we have a folder for each week. So week one versus Thomasville, week two versus Lexington, whatever that might be. We share that every single week, Friday night as soon as the game's over. And Saturday, Sunday, you know, are for us to, to watch film on our own and, um, and then collaborate, you know, via text message, phone call, and, and, and you know, coordinators will, will, will fill this out um, and go from there. Um, so well, I, think an important, I think an important thing to mention, too, is, you know, it's, it's organization, uh, a little bit of work on the front end. But once you get it done, you know, it's, not, it's nice to not be sitting there during second period during school and having to worry about your script yep. for that day or what you're doing. So it's a little bit of work on the front end of it. And uh, I would say by, you know, uh, 10 o'clock at the latest on a Sunday, we've got scout wristbands typed up and ready to go and everything else ready to go. And, yep. and we're pretty much done for the week uh, with all that stuff. And now it's just go out there. And I like the fact that we also include in our practice uh, a period where, you know, the coach just calls it. So the guys, this, I'm going to give you the down and distance and, and you call it. Coach, uh, you know, and you're calling exactly what you're going to see all week and do. For a defensive guy, you kind of get a feel by about, uh, you know, Wednesday. You kind of get a feel by left hash, you know, what the down distance is, kind of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so you're not, you're not chasing ghosts. Now, just like anything else, you can prepare all week for a 3-4 team and they can come out in the 4-2-5. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that just tests the, the, the build of your offense to make sure that it's multiple enough to run against different things. So, uh, Absolutely. But we feel like – uh, we've been prepared, like like Coach said before. We uh, we're at a new school. This is our third year. Uh, we have not met since we got at this school. Uh, I don't know that we've met one time on a weekend. No. Uh, our, our our JV team was undefeated this year. Uh, our varsity team was ten and two. So we feel like uh, not. We don't have the answers, like Coach said. But but just like anything else, you know, I I know there are guys out there that are that have these programs that you know, are charging hundreds of dollars for you to do and you can build your whole offense and you can do that. But to me, some of that time, some of that time can be wasted and, and better spent doing this. Now, you know, we're all trying to find things to do right now. Uh, you know, it wouldn't, <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't take you much at all to go through uh, the scout video uh, check sheet and go down through a couple of teams and, 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 you know, hey, first team we're playing next year, go back through last year's video and a couple of those things and look at it and, and, and take your young guys on staff and, let them do it and just kind of build a game plan. So, yep. and I think you'll be, I think you'll be pleased with the price when you see it. It's not, you know, we're not, it's, it's, it's less than a book guys. So I mean, I mean, you, you, you can buy, you can buy, you know, four of these for what you can buy uh, a, a book for. And, and, you know, guys, we're not, you know, we're not, you know, like I gotta tell guys, you know, we're not trying to make money, but you know, it, for us to sit down on the front end and get this stuff together, you know, you know, was a little bit of time. And I feel like that, you know, if I was somebody and I was, you know, because like last year in the sun, in the spring, I was looking for answers. All right. I'm not calling it on a Friday night with any confidence. What do I need to do? Well, I needed to practice more efficiently. So I created this and it helped me practice more efficiently. And, you know, I would have wanted to find a resource, you know, that would help me and help my program. So this is, you know, what we've kind of hung our hat on this year. And like Coach talked about, you know, had some success and it's only going to get better. You know, this thing's only going to evolve for me. It's only going to evolve for, for our defensive coordinator as we see different things, as we, you know, see things that we, you know, we like better. Um, but, though, but, guys, those are our, our, our templates. The, the last thing that I've got um, is a spring template that I created. Um, if we ever get to a spring practice, which we might not. <laughs> we might not, uh, yeah. Or you can utilize this during um, – let me get it pulled up. You can use this during fall camp, okay? Can y'all see this now? We're it's good? blank. It's blank now. We're blank yeah, now? Yeah, spring script, yeah. We're good? Okay, good. Yeah. So, guys, it's, it's, it's just like the other things. Say you have – I've got on here 14 days of spring, all right? Basically, you're going to put in what you want to run in all these periods. Um, in North Carolina, we can have shoulder pads helmet on, but we have to have a pad in between us. We can't go to the ground. Um, we can't be live. Um, we get, Coach, what is it, 16 days, 14 days? Uh, we've got about a 16-day window. Yeah. Last year with weather and everything, I think we got nine days. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so, you know, we're limited in North Carolina. I know every state are, you know, I know every state, um, you know, doesn't get a spring practice or, you know, a, a spring um, deal. Some, some teams get to have spring scrimmages and have spring games. Um, but in the summer, you guys can utilize this and it's formatted just like the other ones are. Um, it's going to auto populate for you, but it's just somewhere to, you know, keep things organized. Um, but again, just wanted to show you guys that. Um, again, you know, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free I've been, to. I've been trying to answer them as we go along. And okay. I think, yeah. Good deal. Um, you guys, um, you know, find us on Twitter if you need anything. Um, you can go to our website, footballcoachescorner.com. All this stuff is on there. There'll be a shop. You can look at this stuff. I've actually got some videos um, that are similar to what you just went through for the game plan templates. This is going to be available online, hopefully tonight, probably tomorrow, for you to revisit if you need to see something. Um, but email us if you have any questions. Or say you're like, Coach, I want to buy this, but I don't, you know, I need some more guidance on it. Last night I walked a guy through it for about an hour. Um, you know, guys, like we talked about, we're here, you know, here to collaborate. There's stuff that you guys do that we would, you know, I'm sure we would want to know about. Um, so, again, feel free to, to hit us up. Um, Coach Holcomb also hosts a podcast. Check that out, Football Coaches Corner. And I don't um, know if you guys have done anything about podcasts, but you, you don't make